Another set of ratios is the earnings coverage ratios, again related to debt and the borrowings and the financing of the company. Earnings coverage ratios indicate whether a firm has enough earnings to service the debt. Servicing a debt includes interest and loan repayments. Earnings coverage ratios include the interest coverage ratio or times interest term ratio, fixed charges coverage ratio, cash flow to fixed charges ratio. Okay, these are simple, common sense oriented, could not be difficult to remember. Understand the meaning, the logic, the rationale, and proceed. This ratio measures the firm's ability to meet its interest expenses, which one interest coverage ratio. So you make an earnings of or your earnings before interest and tax is this, you divide it by the interest expense. Now what does this mean, uh, mean students? Suppose we make, uh, we have 1 million as our EBIT and if suppose only 100,000 is my interest expense, it means, means it has 10 times, 10 times the amount of interest that it has to pay, right? So this is very comfortable. We know the interest is fully covered. They will be able to pay 10 times that interest and therefore it seems to be financially secure. Of course, this is an income statement ratio. The debt, equity, a debt, assets, all those ratios were balance sheet ratios because being taken from the balance sheet. These are income statement ratios. Earnings before interest and tax is used. All non recurring items are excluded from the earnings before interest and tax because after all they will not be there every year. So, 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 um, okay, interest coverage ratio. Uh, higher the ratio, greater is its ability to meet the interest obligation. It can be used in combination with the debt equity ratio to assess the long term financial health of a firm. So, if there is a lot of uh, debt, debt, but, uh, but, but there is also an interest coverage, very high interest coverage ratio, there is a little more stability. If there is a low debt equity ratio and a high interest coverage ratio, this of course this is extremely good. In fact, they may not be using sufficient debt. A high debt equity ratio with a low interest coverage, this is great. This is this is uh, this is red alert, so to say. And this is absolutely red alert. A firm earned twenty thousand dollars before interest and taxes. Thirty percent tax rate has the following debt outstanding the ventures. 10%, $10,000 debentures, 12% mortgage bonds, 20000 What is the annual interest coverage of the firm? What is your expense? 10% plus 12%, 10%, 1000 12% of 10000 2400 3400 Now, earnings before interest in tax is 20000 divided by 3400 We have covered nearly six times, nearly six times. That is interest coverage ratio. Fixed charges coverage ratio. Again, you take earnings before but fixed charges and interest and divide it by the fixed charges. Of course, a form of conservative ratio which would include interest expense on debt and uh, leases and principal repayments of debt and leases. Uh, can we conclude the fixed charges coverage ratio EBIT is 2 million here. Interest on loan is, is, is just 100,000 and 50,000 capital lease. Tax is 35 percent. Principal repayment of loan we have to pay 375. Repayment of capital lease 125. And there is an annual payment of operating leases of 70,000. So this, this is actually fixed charge, right? This has to be added back to the EBIT. So what is our fixed charges? I have an interest loan of 100,000, interest on capital uh, lease, right? Uh, 50,000, I get this from here. Then principal payments are 375 and 125, that's 500,000. Annual operating lease payments of 70,000, totally 720,000. Now, EBIT is 2 million. I'm adding back the operating lease payments, which must have been deducted, right? So, what I get is, is 
as a result what I get is 2,070,000 is my uh, EBIT uh, before the fixed charges. Fixed charges coverage ratio is the earnings before before fixed expenses 2,070,000 divided by the fixed 720. This is 2.875. Yeah, fixed charges coverage ratio. Here you understand that when I got this earnings before interest and tax, it is after this this lease payment, annual payment of operating rent. So this has been added back. This finance, whatever financial fixed costs are there. Yeah. I put my fixed charges. What are the fixed charges? Fixed charges, fixed charges, the interest on loan, interest on capital. Uh, lease, the, the, the repayment of loan, the repayment of the capital lease, and I have the annual operating lease payment. So, totally 720,000. Right? And the earnings, uh, EBIT was 2 million. I added back 70,000 of the annual operating lease payments. Cash flow to fixed charges ratio. The fixed charges coverage ratio measures. Uh, the firm's ability to meet the fixed charges from the operating cash flows. Cash from operations plus fixed expenses plus tax divided by the fixed charges. Cash from operations would have been arrived at after deducting the taxes, interest and operating lease payments. That is why cash from operations, when we arrive at cash, again students, I repeat, cash flow statement discussed in part 1. Cash flow statements discussed in part 1. Marginal cost and concepts, etc. discussed in part 1. Financial reporting done in part 1. Uh, anyway, cash. So, so what is your cash from operations? To that, we have added back the taxes, the interest, and the operating lease payments. Since all this would be deducted, right? So, these are the, suppose this is our cash from uh, operations divided by the fixed charges gives us. So, is there enough cash to pay the pay the fixed charges? The cash flow very often discusses the profit, but but but. Have severe had become bankrupt due to the cash crisis. So, so while they make enough profits to pay their interest and fixed charges, do they have enough cash to be the same? So, it's the cash flow to fixed charges ratio. Let me let me just make this cash flow to fixed charges ratio. Cash flow to fixed charges. We've got the same example now. Now, we have the fixed charges. The cash flow from operations that is given to us as 950,000. So we added back the taxes which were paid off. Taxes paid in cash was 500,000. Okay, the information is given to me here. So uh, interest paid is 150,000 that comes from here. Added back operating lease payment and I got cash from operations 1670,000. Operating cash flows to fixed charges ratio divide and you get 2.319. So here also the profits were higher, the cash flow slightly lower than that, so this becomes a little more conservative. What are we seeing? Whether there is enough cash, enough cash to meet the fixed charges. A quick recap, students, of the capital structure issues. Do you remember that? Total debt to capital. That is self-explanatory. So it is it is the total debt, both short term and long term, divided by total capital debt and equity. Debt equity ratio, on the other hand, is the, the same numerator divided by equity, <coughs> shareholders equity. Next is debt to total assets, total debt, again same, same numerator uh, divided by a total assets. Interest coverage, 
is 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 the earnings before interest divided by before interest in tax divided by the interest expense. What about the fixed charges coverage ratio? Fixed charges coverage ratio earnings before fixed charges and interest divided by the fixed charges. Cash flow to fixed charges, cash from operations plus fixed charges plus tax. So you take the cash. You are seeing how much cash you have to meet these expenses. So cash from operations, you get from operating activities. Are you generating enough cash from operating activities? Mind you, a cash flow has financing and investing activities too. So are you generating enough cash from your operating activities, uh, activities to meet all your fixed charges? Right. Since the cash from operations is arrived at after deducting these fixed charges, we have added them back as also any taxes which have been paid. Clear? A recap? Think? 